Good day, YouTubers, fellow reloaders, fellow hobbyists, crafts people, restorers, all that good stuff. Obviously, we're doing a little unboxing here. And uh, the only thing I've done to these boxes is pull the label off. These two, the items in these boxes are identical. Um, but you wouldn't know that by the size of one of the boxes. And what always irks me, doesn't surprise me because I, I, I actually expect it now, is look at the difference. Nice, crisp, beautiful handled box. And the cardboard on this is just as, was, just as what I would say, you know, equivalent. Uh, yet this one looks like uh, it's been... Uh, tumbled and again all I did was peel off the label tumbled and such so uh, let's go ahead and open the nice box first because something tells me I'm going to be somewhat disappointed in the other box uh, loving the packing taping or at least uh, the taping part I don't know about the packing we'll find out oh look at that double packed Okay, so maybe the box comparison is more legit by comparing these two boxes, which that's more size appropriate based on what's supposed to be in here. And what is supposed to be in here is old stuff, like almost 100 years old stuff. Actually, one of them is from uh, 1935. The other is from a few years later. So we're we're talking old stuff, so obviously, probably not reloading related. Some of my other hobbies. Okay, so what we've got here is packing. Put that in the box. Spend the night in the box. And what we've got here, as you can tell, while well, it's still hot from being in the truck, What we've got here, more cardboard that will go in the garbage. Obviously, you can tell this is a miter gauge. And what makes this uniquely special as a restoration project is, oh, and these look like the two. The two thingy things. Nothing else in there. Okay, so this person, this seller, gets an A for packing. Excellent packing, I must say. And it's been a while since I've seen some orange packing tape, which is kind of nice too because. You can see it and you know exactly where to grab, where sometimes with the clear, you're like, what am I doing? All right, so we will take these very old thumb screws. Wow. Okay, this one's so old, it's it's got up an old man uh, wilt to it. So we got some bendy bendy. We'll see if we can fix that. We've got a little damage here. Again... This is a hundred. This is 1935. So what are we? Uh, Twelve years. This is 88 years old. So it is a miter saw. A little thin on the. Uh, but what makes this miter so unique? Two things. One, uh, it is a craftsman, and it's so old. It's got the long, what they call the long C. Um, and it also says power tools on it. The later Craftsman stuff did not. What makes this particular miter so unique is this was created originally by Walker Turner. And uh, I will show a, a catalog cut here in a minute uh, from this. Actually, let me grab that right now. I will be back in the flesh. 
All right, I brought two things. One, some info, and two, another what I would call long C craftsman power tool. So this particular, and this has been shined up a little bit, this particular miter, similar era, but uh, as you can see, or maybe not, um, this was more the norm, and then how they, you know, modified this end piece, uh, and then put stops in for 30, 45, and 90. So right now, if you loosen this, there is, there's nothing in between any of the different degrees. There's no 90 stop, there's no 45, there's no 30, there's no, there's no stop. Uh, you have to line it up and then lock it in. And there is your stop. And that's cool. Very flexible. Uh, beautiful piece of hardware, old hardware. Well, in 1935, so uh, again, I don't know if this, I'd have to look in the catalogs to see if this was before or after. So I'm going to say around. But this particular Craftsman miter was only offered in 35. And it came from the 1935 catalog. Again, uh, 1935 models. And this was $2.50 in 1935. I'll put up uh, probably a little uh, header on how much that is in 2023 dollars. But in any case, the reason they made a big deal about this, because it's geared indexing. And by that I mean nothing here, but on the bottom of this, and this has had to be expensive. There are gears, so there is no guesswork on uh, dialing in. And this might be so, there we go. Let me move this out of the way a little bit. But uh, in order to get to 90, it, it kind of reminds me of, so the gear, and there's, I don't know if you can hear that, but there are kind of stops that are 90, 45, and 45. So it looks like this particular is off one degree uh, in terms of needing to be adjusted. So when I take this completely apart, and it looks like Too cool. Again, very granular in terms of the degree. Uh, if you're going to something in between a stop and then to lock that down in place. Whoops. Too much junk on the bench. So, I thought this was too good to pass up for a couple reasons. One, if you look online and you see what a Turner Walker, or Walker Turner, I can't remember which one was first, geared which looks exactly the same so walker turner made this for uh sears and uh, it even says and it will say better when i clean it up geared self-indexing miter gauge and then it says patent i think it says patent pending yes so this and again to adjust this one degree is looks like it's just uh loosening this screw and sliding that over just a tad but yeah this will uh this will get a nice cleaning oh it's all yucky yucky it'll get a nice cleaning and uh i decided to leave this one so this one is what it's going to be i decided to leave this one i'm going to call this patina natural obviously i did polish some things up some things but for the most part, uh, I left it patinaed as opposed to uh, slapping paint on it. And it looks like there was blue paint in where it says Craftsman Power Tools and each of the uh, degrees. So this one looks like, God bless it, that's going to go in the garbage. This one looks like it was black with no paint. So this one might be a perfect candidate for my hammer tone possibly, or gold. 
uh, or the bronze powder, power bronze, or uh, or the gold. Yeah, we'll see if we can straighten that puppy up. That's too bad. This one. That's too bad. I have a funny feeling if we try to straighten that out, that might uh, that might go south. It might break on me. Um, maybe some heat, some heat, and some. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that uh, we'll see how that goes. Or just leave it as is because that uh, has character. And I actually have these two. Um, the, what are they called? Uh, da, 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 indexing, uh, I can't remember what they're called. I don't, uh, I can't remember, but I'll look that up. But I actually have these rods, which go in this hole, these holes, which is what these clamp down onto. Uh, I have this on another saw and I spent some time last week polishing those up and those look just gorgeous now. So this is a cool piece of history could not pass this up uh, this was more expensive than some of the saws that i've recently acquired but uh extremely heavy duty a little thin on the the uh looks like it's a little thin and it might be too wobbly but uh again just could not pass that up for the sake of a yeah, different size for the sake of history the piece of history 88 year old piece of history too cool so on to the second box opening which as you already know is another miter because i told you they were both the same thing now it comes down to well, what kind of miter is it? Well, I don't know. It might be a broken miter based on this box. All right, where to open? Let's go with this damaged side. That looks like it's least resistance. got I hate popcorn we've got popcorn yucky popcorn is such a mess I'm no fan of popcorn all right so packing wise that'll be pretty good okay so half the popcorn is still in the box let's see if we can get the other half in back in the box hate popcorn so this is an older person this popcorn is old school I find all right so the fact that whoever the seller was took this apart took that part off hopefully all the parts are here uh, I will either edit out or speed this up this annoying there's clear tape that you can't see where it, where it goes. Hate popcorn. Hatey, hatey popcorn. All right, there we go. One more piece of rampant popcorn. All right, we've got what looked to be the pieces to assemble all of that together. Oh, that's a rusty, rusty, heavy duty. A lot heavier duty when you look at the difference. Yeah. Very, very heavy duty. Get rid of that. Tight 
tapey tapey. Oh, we've got a lot of patina, a lot of uh, pitting. That's unfortunate. That this will need to go. Uh, oh yeah, that's unfortunate. Wow, that sucks. That will be uh, bead blasted. Won't help with the pitting, but it will get the, the rust out of the pits. So you're saying to yourself, so what's the what's the difference? And that's what we're going to discuss. Or at least that's what I will demonstrate. Because this one also has a cool factor. Alright, so this little bag of tricks and tips is the is the equivalent of that and this. So uh, again, the cool factor. What all came out of here? The cool factor was this being a push button, spring push button. I love it. Uh, so that I think that was a sharper point at one point. Uh, and this probably goes. Oh, motherfucker, that's broken. I don't recall seeing that broken. So I will look a little closer at the at the ad because it probably was an angle where it was showing this and not that. That's a bummer. Because mm. that's very cool. That, uh, that uh, release, because this release is an important part of uh, of this device so and you know, we've got that that sits on top of here like that and that goes in here like that I have no idea what that little thing is but yeah that's a bummer I'll be looking that up on the, I don't recall seeing that but what made this cool And it looks like it's from the gold era. So that would put it in the 50s-ish. Because this is the power bronze color. What makes this one cool, it's kind of in between these two. So this, nothing. And later on you saw that they had... Uh, this type of mechanism where you pull this out and you could have a couple of stops uh, or not depending on what you're doing within so this was uh, after all of these but what makes this cool in my eyes an excellent candidate for restoration is all the stops so again whole lot of engineering to do stops at 60 stops at 45 stops at 30 I, I'm not actually I'm not sure if it'll stop at 30 30 uh, so 45 looks like a stop 90 looks like a stop and 45 looks like a stop so a whole lot of engineering to put this in uh, to make those stops that are now uh, less complicated. So we will put this back. I don't know. I'm going to assume that this... Nope. So I'm going to assume that stays local to that. I'm going to assume this also. Uh, maybe that was on the bottom. Was there a, uh, I will have to watch this back to see uh, where this came from. So, you know what? I don't know where, 
I don't know where this one scooted out from. I'm thinking maybe there. But maybe it's too wide, so maybe it's here. Or here. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to put this together-ish. And I find it's interesting that these are in here because these are actually for this. So these should not even be in here. What do we got? An eighth? No. 64. That may be an eighth. With all that rust, hard to tell. Or is it metric? No, it's an eighth. I wonder why somebody would put that in there. Because it's technically, come on, grab. Maybe not. There we go. It's for that, but I'll put these back for uh, time being. So whoever did this, maybe that was their way of getting away from the thumb portion of the thumb screw. Who knows? Who knows? And it doesn't have a raised lip, so maybe I'm going to have to find this in the catalog. I will do some catalog searching later. All right, let's put this together and see how it looks. All right, so we've got that. that. This will go in that hole. And my camera is beeping at me because of, I think, battery. So I might die here in a second. Nice. Obviously, whoever was using this didn't uh, didn't take it out to the sides too much. Something like this. Looks like it mounts in the dovetail. Sorry for the lack of screenshot, but I'm trying to beat the dying battery. All right, so there we go. So it looks like loosen and Oh, that's funny. So, you actually loosen, you, you, this thumb device pops the, the plunger out. So, uh, it's like you're finding your degree and then locking in. So this will, this spring, which I'm, when I take it apart and clean it and oil it, will be a lot springier. So that's cool. So you would n normally take it out and then find your, lock your, lock your degree in and then tighten. So let's see. I don't know why, why it's catching. Maybe, oh, that's because of the, yeah, there's 30. It's weathered, and it's amazing how everything sticks. And it looks like that, maybe that's why that was loose. Yeah. 
So we've got a 30, 35, 45, 60. So it looks like this dovetail, this little divot in here can go 60, 45, 30. Uh, wherever there is a space, uh, obviously certain spaces fit better. So that's 90. So this is going to need some work. It looks like there's a little, you know, etch in there to uh, to describe where that is actually pointed. But uh, if, uh, you know, this would be totally unnecessary, um, again, depending on what you're trying to do. So maybe it makes sense that once it's locked into 90, uh, you set that. And then whatever other degree you're interested in trying to achieve will be easier but this will get a this will get a clean this will get a clean and then uh, they go on the bench more later good afternoon all bench is a bit of a cluster right now as uh, I spent the morning bringing things to a much cleaner appearance and uh, stripping off the gold stripped off really easy the walker turner turner walker black was a bear bear absolute bear uh, so i'm debating what color this will definitely be the uh power bronze um leaning towards hammer tone black for this one not quite sure we'll see as i have some afternoon uh latte eggnog latte mm. oh yummy tis the season and i've got stuff de-rustifying up in here it looks uh, a heck of a lot better than it did yesterday that's that one and that's that one interesting uh finish so we will we will get that going in uh and the buffers and the wire wheels and the everything else that it needs to do. So the next time you see all this stuff, it'll be uh, finished. So more to come later. Hello, YouTubers. We'll put this restoration segment to rest. As these two are now fully restored. This one will actually make it on to my saw tabletop again I think it came out exceptionally well you can see that restored very nicely very clean Redzilla does a great job of uh, bead blasting so between bead blasting wire brushing uh, steel wool a little bit of paint this is a uh, very nice, and I, I left the 1 8 inch hex, or I cleaned them up and put them back. Uh, so this one, again, uh, I love the whole, uh, the idea behind uh, the fact that there's no stop uh, uh, preventing this from moving right now, but um, if I wanted to find a stop at... 75, 60, 45, 30. So there's all these stops. Let me just put it back. And then you push the plunger in to get that stop, and then you lock it down. And there it's locked at 90. So this is a very cool, different implementation uh, for the uh, miter. Very clean. Uh, I like it. Which brings us to number two. So, uh, I talked about this one being the $2.50. And the miter gauge, uh, I don't know what was on page 15 for $3. But the miter gauge above, which is now this, it was $2.50 with all of the, the goodies. So this, this looks exactly like that now um, I usually have these hanging on my uh, 
on my saw leg. Uh, not that I necessarily use them, but uh, I found it interesting that this was only in the 1935 catalog. And I think I know why, because after restoring it and finding out how it actually works and taking everything apart and cleaning it and getting it pristine again, um, this pin in here adds stress to this particular column because this pin, I'm not going to say free floats, but it doesn't lock the, um, the miter in per se. Uh, the only thing locking the miter is this knurled set of locks. And this is what locks it, and this is what turns it. And the problem is, and you can see it right now, is that because it's so clean, it's easy to fall. Uh, but this isn't how you'd be moving your miter. You would have it in the actual slot on the table saw. So I'm debating, because it works fine, but I'm debating whether or not to strip the paint off here and just go polished steel to make that friction uh, less of a friction issue because uh, I mean you can see uh, there's there's no shortage of friction challenges uh, on here due to how things are set up and the cool factor is off the map um, it's just a different it's just a different kind of thing uh, so this will not make it onto the bench per se but uh, this I'm going to call this a collectible but uh, the whole gearing just amazing it cleaned up gorgeous but uh, very different so I can understand why I'm sure that this had its function challenges and when you think about the level of infinite use infinite swivel infinite whatever uh, just a different different uh, approach but again the cool factor from 1935 I must say is off the map very cool good stuff